In this video, we're going to create a simple milk carton using a polygon cube, the extrude tool, and the edge loop tool. I'm going to start by creating a polygon cube. I'll move through my orthographic and perspective view to scale it roughly to the height I might want to start with. Now that I have the general shape I want, I'm going to go to my top view. In my top view, I want to split this geometry in half using the edge loop tool. I'll return to my perspective view. And now I'm going to begin extruding the peak of the box. I'll right click and choose face, selecting both faces on the top, and then going to my extrude tool. And if the extrude tool doesn't appear on your dock, you can hold down Command Shift, go to Edit Mesh, and you'll see Extrude. I'll click on the Extrude tool and I'm going to center the Edit, so I'll click on the blue dial and I'll pull it up and I'll start to pinch it at the top the way a milk carton would be. These planes on the top will give us where the two pieces of cardboard meet and seal the box at the tip. I'll add another polygon face by clicking on the tool or hitting G on the keyboard, and I'll pull that up. Now that I have the general shape, I'm going to start to bevel the edges so it does look like creased cardboard. I'll right click and I'll choose Edge. And I'm going to go around and select the edges that I need to bevel, avoiding the ones I don't. Now that I have the one selected I want to bevel, I'll hit 4 on the keyboard to make sure that I haven't selected any that I don't desire to have the bevel on it. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, and I'm going to go to Bevel, and I'm going to go to the Attributes. Now, this gets pretty subjective, but I've set the width to 0.75 and then three segments. The three segments are going to allow me to put the folds on the inside where it kind of creases and pinches together on either side of the peak top. Once I've got it set, I'll hit apply, and now I have the bevels I want. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to crease it in. And to do so, I'm going to add one more edge loop at the very top. I'll put it as close as I can to the original one. And now if I were to zoom in on that, and I were to right click and go to Vertex, I can select the three inside vertices here and pull it in, crease it the way it would be if it were a real milk carton. Now these are a little high, so I'm going to move those, and I'll do it in my orthographic view so that I do both sides at once. So I'm going to click and drag here, and I'll just move those down so they're kind of next to the ones on your side. I'll return to my perspective view. And I'm going to shift select these three from the original bevel. Now I'm going to drag my x-axis in, and I'll pull it down a little bit. And you can see now we've placed that crease the way a carton would have. I'm going to do it on the other side as well now. So once again, I'll select just those three. And I think I'll go to my orthographic view where I can see the one I did on the other side. And I can kind of make it more symmetrical. Now at this point, I might go in and tweak these a little bit more. The end result, in our perspective view, will be something like this. Now if I wanted to add a little bit more detail, I could start to hit 3 on the keyboard to see what it would look like with a proxy smooth. And it kind of falls apart. At this point, I can simply go in with my edge loop tool, and I can start to introduce more geometry if I choose to hold together the shape in the context of the proxy. I'll go back to my object mode and deselect, and you can see kind of what we have now. It's too round up here, so once again, I'd return to one on the keyboard, and I would go in with my edge loop, 
and I put another one in closer to the top to hold together the top of it as well. Now if you're using a reference and you're actually looking at the file, it's not so straight like this and triangular. So I'm going to get the edge loop tool once again and I think maybe I'll introduce an edge down in this area and I'll get my scale tool and I'll just move this out that way, hitting three on the keyboard. And now we've got that soft curve that a milk carton has at the top. I'm going to return to my object mode, delete by type history, and I'm going to choose modify freeze transform so that I can put a texture reference on and then generate the UV map. I'll start by right clicking on my geometry and assigning a new material. Arnold, AI standard surface. And in there I'll go to the base color tab and navigate to the create render node and click on the checkerboard. I'll select my viewport and hit six on the keyboard to see what this looks like. With the geometry selected and the freeze transform applied, I'll hold down the space bar. I'm going to go to UVs and I'm going to click on automatic. I'll deselect my geometry, right click, go to object mode, and then I'll access the UV editor. And you can see now that all the pieces have been lined up. And it is proportional. You can see that that checkerboard is pretty nicely applied to all the geometry. Now all we need to do is sew these pieces together. I'll start by right-clicking and choosing Edge. And I'll start the far left-hand side of the side of the box. And I'll see the corresponding path that's been selected as well over on the right. Now I need to use the tool which is under cut and sew and move and sew. It appears as this little envelope with the bottom missing and a minus sign. When I click on that, it will attach it to its proper place. I'll go to the outside edge of this part of the shell and I'll click on that. I'll go to the far right hand side and so on. It's pretty logical how you would sew these together. All I need to do is roll over an edge and it'll show me where it goes and I'll begin to sew these all together. Once I have it sewn together, I'll put it in the quadrant where the checkerboard appears. I'll go to the object mode of my geometry, deselect, select again, and then inside the UV editor under image, I will generate my UV snapshot as a PNG, and the resolution size is subjective. Apply and close, and then I would open up in Photoshop and design my label.